In this video, I'm going over the seven methods that people use to hack and how to protect yourself. Now, the first one here is something I'm seeing more and more in the last couple of years. It has gotten really bad and also very hard to distinguish the difference between an official email and a phishing email. This is what happens. People send you an email like this. It looks identical to what Microsoft sends me on a daily basis. If I click those links, it'll take me to a non-Microsoft site that looks exactly like Microsoft site. So it's very easy to put in your credentials, have your username and password stolen, and pretty soon you're spamming your friends to go buy you a gift card and send it to them. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Just be careful of phishing emails. The best way to protect yourself in here is to hover over the link, look at the website, make sure if it's a Microsoft email, you're going to a Microsoft website. Microsoft's not gonna go ahead and say, hey, go to this weird domain that you never heard of and start typing in your username and password. That's not a thing. The second way people get hacked is through fake wireless access points. And this usually happens in a public area so if it's a coffee shop or a hotel these are very vulnerable sites as hackers can set up fake access points that act and look identical to the ones that already are there and by doing this you're basically relaying all information you're doing on your computer through their access point they're able to sniff out any important information steal it and you know you get ripped off it's not a good thing so be very careful what you can do to protect yourself here is use a vpn in a public place that is very nice because it establishes an encrypted connection to your vpn provider and then out from there now vpns by themselves don't offer any privacy i've kind of gone over this in past videos but uh, i do like vpns in this instance because it will protect you from this public or this man in the middle attack that's right there. So uh, VPNs are great in this instance. My personal VPN provider that I've used for the past couple of years is private internet access. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below, but if you don't want to use them and you want to use a cheaper one, by all means, anything is better than nothing. The third method is key logging in viruses. This one is uh, very common, especially on Windows-based PCs. Mac and Linux obviously don't have this type of issues because they just typically don't see any viruses or I have never seen them get viruses. So if you're on a Windows PC, you get a virus. Typically, these may not slow down your computer, but they'll just sit there in the background snooping on you, recording your keystrokes. So when you go to sign in your bank or your website, it's recording everything you're doing. So it's able to pick up your usernames, your passwords, all these types of things, simply from infecting your computer. So be very careful. Obviously, the best way to prevent this action is to have a very good antivirus and uh, keep it up to date. And the best way, obviously, is just not to use Windows. I would highly recommend a Linux or even a Mac solution over a Windows based solution, especially if you're looking for security. The fourth way hackers can really wreak some havoc is what's called a DDoS or a denial of service attack. This is more common if you host your own website. I've actually gone through this personally. Uh, the best way to prevent your website from getting DDoSed is by employing the services of Cloudflare not sponsored they're a great service and if you were a personal website like my website it is completely free there's no reason not to use cloudflare they're a great service and they help prevent or at least mitigate these forms of attacks and i absolutely love them and the fifth method and this also has risen uh, to be a very common method of hacking someone in recent years is session hijacking in the last couple of years, probably seen a lot of websites move to SSL where it has the lock on the website. Now, this is very important because session hijacking is specifically prevalent in HTTP sites where they can actually take advantage of a cookie and uh, read other websites data. So uh, it can actually hijack that session. A good example of this is let's say you're logged in on a session through your bank if the bank is doesn't have a great security a lot of times you could hijack that cookie and you could basically act as that person or that session so most places especially big banks have gotten a lot wiser to this and i think it's almost impossible for that to happen 
but uh, be very careful, especially when visiting HTTP websites, as this can happen and your session can be hijacked. And speaking of hijacking, there's also DNS hijacking. This can happen through a variety of forms. There's the local where like, let's say a virus changes your DNS to uh, their server to where you try to go to Facebook and it redirects you to a virus or another website where they grab and siphon off your information. There's also uh, where your router might get changed. Let's say a hacker hacks into your router by, let's say you don't secure the router and you just use the default password, admin, admin, or admin password. They log in, change the DNS to a DNS server they control. And then they can just basically say where you go on the internet. They can say, okay, if they go to this website, redirect them to here. And then the final form is the actual DNS server itself can get hijacked where someone infiltrates that big server that a lot of people are using for DNS and changes things. So I've never seen this personally on level three, Google DNS, open DNS, those really big services out there for DNS servers, I have never seen this. However, internet service provider DNSs are notoriously bad. Not only are they slow and cumbersome, a lot of them lack the security of these big names. So when it comes to DNS, make sure you're using a proper DNS server. And then the last method that people use to hack is simply just copying other people. It's not difficult to hack. A lot of times it's difficult to prevent hackers, but a lot of hackers are simply avid readers. If you go to sans.org, they actually track most of the known exploits. Many ethical hackers go out and look at the current exploits and go, hey, is my system patched for this? A lot of people don't have the security personnel to do such a thing, and many hackers just look, hey, these are the known exploits. I know these people are probably understaffed or have not patched this exploit and then they go ahead and, and just run it against them. So this is a great place to look and research, but just know, uh, try to patch and update your system when you can to prevent known exploits from happening on your system. So as far as learning up on these things, you should take like an ethical hacking course. These are great because security personnel is way understaffed in almost every business. Every IT person I know is always looking for some good security personnel to actually look over their networks, do penetration testing or pen testing to make sure they don't have any of these exploits or they're not vulnerable because it is constantly a moving target. You're always having to read up definitely check out the sans.org site. And if you're not already a Linux user, I highly recommend learning Linux because most of the penetration testing I do, I always am using Linux because there's so many tools and features that you can do. Now, from a system admin point of view, obviously I like a lot of Linux servers because they're far more secure than a Windows-based system for a whole variety of reasons, which I've already touched on in past videos. So. With that said, guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. What did I miss? What would you say is the most common hacking method? And I'll see you on the next video.